It is good to have you and we welcome you. We had a great time of uh, celebrating last evening with the feedbacks. But before I get to the feedbacks, I understand that uh, Charles and Juanita celebrated 65 years of anniversary. Is that correct, Charles and Juanita? All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, there they are back there. If you don't know Charles and Juanita, there's Charles waving. Yes. 65 years. Juanita, I just want to say this to you. I spent 30 minutes in your all's home a few weeks ago, and I am going to send you a sympathy card for spending 65 years with Charles. But then we had a great time last night with the feedbacks as they celebrated 50 years, and uh, some of their family is uh, here with us and friends today. And, uh, and there was a lot of real nice flowery things said about Bob and Letha. And, uh, but let me just tell you, uh, they, they give me specific instructions to keep mine serious. Not really, but I'm only saying that. But uh, to keep mine serious and talk about the, the solemnity and, and the sacredness of this moment and, and for 50 years. And, I, and so I did that. I did that. But I know some things that you all need to know that this marriage did not get started out just right. In fact, it started based on a lie, and that's the truth. Here we go. They're in Clintwood. They're in Clintwood, Virginia. It's 1130 on October the 9th, 1965. And um, the clerk is talking. Of course, they run off to get married. And the clerk is asking how old Bob was, and Bob said, I'm uh, 21, and they asked how old Letha was, and Bob said, she's 20, and the clerk looked at Bob and said, you cannot be married in the state of West, in the state of Virginia unless you're 21, and so the clerk looks at Bob and says, now how old is she? Bob said, she's 21. (laughs) Oh my goodness. We had a great time. We had a great time. Well, Let's get the wall to fall if we possibly can today, and let's talk about this. A few weeks ago in 2 Kings, we talked about how God caused the Syrian army to hear an enemy army of horses and chariots rushing toward them, when actually it was only four crippled lepers walking in their direction. We also briefly mentioned in 2 Chronicles 20 how God caused a trio of Judah's enemies to turn on each other and destroy themselves. I'm learning that nearly on every page of the Bible there is a God cause. God caused it to rain 40 days and 40 nights. God caused the sun to stand still. God caused the Red Sea to part. God caused the Jordan River to be rolled back. God caused a coin to be found in the mouth of a fish. God caused a blind man to hear. God caused a lame man to walk. God caused a dead man to rise, Lazarus. And God caused walls to fall. So this morning... What is your Jericho? Now you have your sermon card, and I would just encourage you to write down what your Jericho is. What is the wall that you want to fall? What's the wall that needs to fall in your life? Write down your Jericho. Listen very closely. Don't miss this. For your Jericho, there is a God cause. So let's get your wall to fall. Let me encourage you that just because uh, God hasn't caused your wall to fall yet doesn't mean that he can't and doesn't mean that he is not going to. The Syrians, listen closely, the Syrians never heard enemies until the lepers started walking. Now I want you to follow this and I want you to pay close attention to this word until. The Syrians never heard enemies until the lepers started walking. The Red Sea didn't part until the Israelites started crossing. The Jordan River didn't roll back until the priests started waiting. God didn't cause Lazarus to rise until the stones started moving. The coin wasn't found in the fish 
until Peter started fishing. And the walls of Jericho didn't fall until the people started walking and marching and blowing and until the people started shouting. It seems to me, as sure as there is a God cause on every page, it seems to me there is a pattern that God works from. Here it is. Our arriving at the until is what causes God's cause. Our arriving at the until is what causes the God cause. Simply put, without faith it is impossible to please God. Which brings me to this first observation about getting the wall to fall. And you know where it's at. It's Joshua chapter 6. Turn there in your Old Testament. Notice this. They had a passionate until. Because I'm telling you, this until is key to your wall to fall. The Syrians didn't flee. And I read this paragraph, but now that I've said that, I want you to listen one more time because this is crucial. Walls don't fall until we get there. Until. Syrians didn't flee until the lepers started walking. Red Sea didn't part until the Israelites started crossing. The Jordan River didn't roll back until the priests started waiting. God didn't cause Lazarus to rise until stones started rolling. The coin wasn't found until the fish until Peter started fishing. And the walls of Jericho didn't fall until they started marching. Now, Joshua chapter 6, verse 15. Here we go. Let's read it. Several places we'll read this morning in this uh, chapter. It came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day. Now, remember, this observation is this, this passionate until. Notice some things here. Uh, The seventh day, they rose early. Mark these down. They rose early uh, about the dawning of the day, and they marched around the city seven times, in the same manner on the day only that they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened, and when the priests blew the trumpets, and Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Okay, here we go. Watch this. First of all, they got up early at dawn. And remember, the idea is these people had a very passionate until. They really wanted to get to the until because they knew that's what caused walls to fall. They had a very passionate until. They got up at dawn. They marched seven times around a 12-acre city, about a quarter of the size of this church's campus. So that gives you some idea. There's 43 acres here. uh, And it is estimated, theirs was 12 acres, and it is estimated that it would have taken, again, we're talking in the neighborhood of 600,000 people, it was estimated that it would take four hours to make that seven trips around that city on that seventh day. And then they shouted. You see, they were punctual up at dawn. They were energized seven times. They were excited. They shouted. You see, I think obedience in lesser things builds a passionate until that gets us to greater things. Boy, I can't emphasize enough this morning. The need to be faithful in small things because here's what it does for you. It builds momentum when you get to the greater things. You have a passionate faith. They are staying in step with God's every command. It is related to Joshua. They know it is their faith field until that brings about a God cause. You see, I've noticed, and I'm sure you have as well, how disengaged we are in our culture. We have lost our passion for the until. We don't want to get there. But please understand, if you want you all to fall, it's not going to fall until you get to your until. Amen? Parents, we go through the motions of parenting. Christians go through the motions of serving. Spouses go through the motions of marriage. Students go through the motions of studying. Pastors go through the motions of leading and preaching. Employees go through the motions of working. And Christians go through the motions of getting our wall to fall. No, no, that's not how the wall falls. There is a passionate faith. There is a passionate until. Our wall won't fall until we engage it intently. We cannot push it down. We cannot push down our wall alone. But neither can we, non, by not engaging and removing ourselves from what is going on. God is not knocking down walls until you and I start believing 
and moving. Let me say that again. There's the until. God is not going to knock down our walls until you and I start believing and moving. Israel wasn't pushing on the wall, but they were marching. They were engaged in what is going on. Uh, They were blowing horns. They were shouting in accordance to the directives of God. Wishing walls down, don't bring them down. Engage them, and they'll come down. I believe passionate engagement is a result of fervent faith. You show me a person that is passionately engaging, that is, that is wanting to get to the until, and I'll show you a person whose faith is building. It seems to me that God does the greatest for people who look the hardest for their until. Where is my until? If, if, if rivers don't go back and, and, and coins is not found in fish, and, and if seas don't part, and, and if these God causes don't happen until, then where is the until? Key, it's crucial. Uh, here's some things that you already know that the Bible says. Faith is a confidence of that which we hope for, for will actually happen. It gives the assurance about things we cannot see. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days, and the walls did fall. Not only did they have a passionate until, they had a big vision. Look at the third verse of that chapter. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram horns to before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down that fall down flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Now the wall of Jericho as I've already mentioned uh, it circles a 12 acre town. The base of the wall is suggested to be about six foot. The, The upper wall is said to be around 50 foot high which makes it in that day near an impringible fortification. The fact that our wall has not fallen tells us one of two things. One, we haven't been here before. Or two, our focus is on the wall. None of us need a bigger God. We just need a bigger vision of a big God and a smaller perception of the wall that we're looking at. If we have been at this tall wall for a long haul, perhaps it's time to change our perspective, mix up the routine. In other words, in other words, something must happen that gives us a vision of a bigger God and a smaller wall, and that is the until that brings a God cause. As the soldiers are circling the wall, I'm thinking every one of them is wondering, what are we doing? Why not use a battering ram? Why not scale the walls? Why not cut off the water supply, the food supply? Why not shoot arrows over the wall? Instead, God told them to silently circle the city. And God promised after they had circled it 13 times over seven days that the wall would fall. We won't have an until moment till we get past this moment. And if we don't have an until moment, God won't cause the wall to fall. In other words, in other words, the reason mine and your wall hasn't fallen is because we haven't been to the until. We haven't arrived at the until. We haven't had an until moment. But once we have an until moment, God will cause the wall to fall. So guess what? There has to be something about mine and your routine that takes us to a place that we experience the until moment. If you look at this 20th verse... Here it is. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet, and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. The Israelites didn't conquer Jericho because of military brilliance. It wasn't the strategy or brute force that caused the walls to collapse. 
They learned how to walk in faith and obedience, and they let the Lord fight for them. God caused their walls to fall. Now, I know 600,000 people can make a lot of noise, but I'm telling you, it was not their big mouth. Come on, amen. It was God's big hand. And some of us would probably be better off if we had a smaller mouth and a bigger God. Amen? Okay. Now, something I don't want you to miss. Arthur McKenzie writes this, and I quote, If you think of a problem as being like a medieval walled city, then a lot lot of people attack it head on. If you think of your problem, if you think of your wall as like a medieval walled city, a lot of people attack it head on. Like a battering ram, they will storm the gates and try to smash through the defenses with their sheer intellectual power and brilliance. And so here's the question with that in mind. Why do we rely solely on human ingenuity, brute force, and strategic strength attempting to cause our wall to fall? Now listen, if mine and your effort had anything to do with getting our wall to fall, it'd be down. Hello. Let me give you a couple things, and I do want you to write these down. Why is it that we rely solely on human ingenuity, brute force, and strategic strength attempting to cause our wall to fall? Number one, in our until, there must be a willingness to look foolish. Can I tell you something? You won't get to your until until you are willing to to look foolish in the eyes of some of your colleagues and associates and those people around you. In other words, I don't know anybody in the Scripture. Now, maybe there's exceptions, but I just don't know anybody in the Scripture that I mentioned earlier. I don't know anybody in the Scripture that that there wasn't some risk of reputation while they were getting to their until. The second thing I want you to write down In receiving a God cause, there must be a willingness to wait. In our until, there must be a willingness to look foolish. And in receiving a God cause, there must be a willingness to wait. Let's talk about this and I'm done. I think the soldiers, the priests, the people felt foolish the first day. Put yourself in their shoes. Okay? You got it? They're just silently, in fact, they're not even allowed to say a word. They've been commissioned and they've been commanded, don't speak a word on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. Keep your mouth shut. I think the soldiers, the priests, the people felt foolish the first day. They are just silently walking around a wall. And I'm sure the inhabitants of Jericho are looking down, very confused. And I wonder if they're not taking some jabs at these 600,000 folk just Marching around, not saying a word. Do you need some cardiovascular work? Is that what's going on today? Do you need to get your heart pumping? I don't know what they're saying to them. But here's what I do know. With each day, first day they looked to themselves perhaps, I believe, real foolish and felt real foolish. Huh? Boy, I want to tell you something. Sometimes that first day, getting to your until, you feel about that high. Amen? When people say, have you lost your mind? What are you doing? This is not how you do things. Oh, but you see, you're at a place at your life that you've been at this wall long enough, and you're willing to mix up the routine so you can get to the until. So here they go. Day one, real foolish. Day two, foolish, but less foolish than day one. (laughs) Day three, day four, day five. Oh, by day five and six, I really don't care. You know what's happening? They're walking in obedience to get to the until the seventh day, seven times. They're walking in obedience to get to the until, and their faith is building. Now listen very closely. Listen very closely. Faith from God is not a shot in the arm, but it is 
a daily exercise routine. Don't, if you, I understand we pray. I understand we pray. And I pray this way, God, give me the faith. And God says, okay, here we go. But here we go on a journey. Because I'm going to take you to the until. Because listen, in receiving a God cause, there must be a willingness to wait. Okay, watch it. You see, again, I think the soldiers, the priests, and the, they felt foolish the first day. They were silently walking around the wall. I'm sure the inhabitants of Jericho are very confused and perhaps making a lot of them. But I think with each day, each trip, their faith began to build. And on the seventh day, when the last lap was being made, the command came, the priests sounded their horns, 600,000 Israelites shouted with a holy roar, and God caused the walls to fall. Now, here's what we want to know. And talk about the significant why is it that why is it that that walking with Jesus sometimes to get to the place that the miracle is yours why is it that sometimes it requires us looking foolish okay the significance of willing to look foolish spells humility the significance of waiting spells faith can I tell you something I just gave you two words that if you'll walk them out, you can get anything from God that you need. Now watch this. You don't want to miss this. Why seven days? Why seven days? Why seven times on the seventh day? Why seven days? God could have changed, caused the wall to fall the first trip. In fact, God could have caused the wall to fall without a trip. Why seven days? Why wait? To receive from God without waiting is to receive from God without faith. To receive from God without waiting is to receive from God without faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, God causes some walls to fall immediately, and no, none of us deny that. They're just, it, there's those occasions, and I would even say, as I reflect on Scripture and even your, your personal journey, I would even say those are rare occasions. Yeah, there's sometimes a wall is down before I get there. Hello, hello, hello. But sometimes I get there and I got to walk around the wall 13 times and shout and scream and holler and blow and, and, and all that you have to do. Un, you're, you're just getting to your until. And when you get there, God will cause the wall to fall. Uh, you see, there is a rare occasions that the wall falls upon our arrival at the wall. But the greatest God calls results in waiting with hope and circling in faith. Gary Chapman wrote a book. On the five love languages, and husbands and wives, I would encourage you to get this. It's an excellent book that, that gives some understanding about your spouse's love language and helps you to assess that and understand uh, what your spouse's love language is. Uh, one of my wife's love languages is the act of service. Now, he suggests that we have our primary love language and we have our secondary love language. And, uh, but I would say, without a doubt, my wife's primary love language is the act of service. If I will help her work in her projects, she is as sweet to me as she can be. You see, that's the reason that I've taken up ironing and sweeping. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I know you all are laughing, and, and sometimes I go, but, but I have three irons, and I have two sweepers. And that's the truth. So when I want a kiss from Sister Brown, I just grab one of the irons. Man, here we go. God has a primary and a secondary love language. In other words, if you want to get God to cause, ring his bell with these two love languages. And I'm confident I know what they are. Faith and humility. He has two primary love languages. It's when his kids walk in humility, and they walk by faith. Now watch what James writes here. God resists the proud and gives more grace to the humble. 
All right? He resists the proud. He gives more grace to the humble. I want to tell you something. When you walk with God in brokenness and humility, I'm telling you, you can get anything from God that you need. He doesn't withhold any good thing from those that walk upright before him. And you know what he says? You know what he says? Here's what I, and I'll paraphrase. It's in Micah. We read it Wednesday night. But I'll paraphrase. Here's what God expects. God expects us to walk in justice and to walk humbly before our God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we have so much religious pride in our culture and in Christianity today that we've turned God off. So what's the deal about the significance of walking, of, 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 of appearing foolish before people? It's, it's, it's humility. I'm, you're, willing, you're willing to take whatever shots that is coming from your peers just to honor your God. And what is so significant about faith? Well, watch what this passage says. And Jesus is having a conversation with Thomas. You remember it, but notice this. Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Now Jesus said to Thomas, watch this, don't miss this. Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, but they believe. Let me tell you something. When you walk in humility, and when you walk in humility by faith, you are at your until, and I promise you, God is going to cause your wall to fall. The significance of the willing to look foolish spells humility. I tell you something, you got to get over yourself if you're going to walk in humility. Amen? And the biggest thing about yourself that you've got to get over is that is when you walk with God and you're mixing up the routine because you've been at the wall and you haven't arrived at the until and so you're mixing up the routine, I'm here to say to you, you're probably your greatest challenge will be those the closest to you criticizing you because you've mixed up the routine. And to them, you appear foolish. But you're not foolish. You're only following God just like Israel was following God and their wall fell. The significance of willing to look foolish spells humility. The significance of waiting spells faith. God loves it when his kids follow him by faith. Oh, he loves it. I mean, he's okay with his kids. That's what he said to Thomas. That's what he said to Thomas. Okay, I'm okay. You see, you got it. You're blessed. You get it. And you're following. Okay, great, Thomas. But blessed are the kids of mine that don't have it, but keep following to get it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're done. Amy's coming. Gang's coming. Today, I want you to know God loves you. Oh, I know you're used to this. And there's nothing that you have done that would cause him to love you less. And there's nothing you need to do that cause him to love you more. So here's what I would suggest to you. Would you come today and follow him in humility and faith? Because that will get you to your until. And when you get to your until, God will cause your wall to fall. Let's stand together. Father, some of us need to mix up the routine to get to our until. The river didn't roll back until the priest started waiting. The coin in the fish's mouth wasn't found until Peter started fishing. The Red Sea didn't part until the children of Israel got there and started crossing. Lazarus was raised from the dead until stones started moving. And on and on and on the list goes. The Syrians didn't hear. The Syrians didn't hear chariots and horses and an, and an enemy army coming at them until the lepers started walking. Until. God, would you help us to mix up our routine so we can get to our until? Because when we get to our until, the walls will fall. It's in Jesus' name that you'll help us today to follow you in humility and faith. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Would you 